Greetings, I'm Avril Owen Swart, Commanding Officer. I wanted to talk a little bit today about what it means to be a member of the Dauntless crew. What is, what is the USS Dauntless? What is our function? Um, at one level, we are a chapter of Starfleet International. Starfleet, of course, is a network of similar chapter organizations that provides a structure through which we can co collaborate with other similar groups around the world. But what kind of a group are we? Well, we are, at least on the surface, a Star Trek fan club. Does that mean that we are a group that shares Star Trek memes on Discord? Well, yes, that's, that's part of what we do. Um, are we a, a costuming group? Do we, do we dress up in Star Trek costumes and, and go around in public and uh, conventions and things? Um, yes, that is also part of what we do. I wouldn't characterize us as a costuming group exactly. I would say that we take pride in the uniforms that we wear. Um, but sure, some people might characterize us as that. Um, are we a, a Star Trek role-playing group? No, um, we do engage in some role-playing games from time to time, but that is not at our core what we do. The, the ranks and titles that we carry are things that we've earned through real life activities. Um, they might not mean the same as the military ranks that use the same words. Um, I carry the Starfleet rank of Admiral. That's not the same as an Admiral in the Navy, but that's not to say that it doesn't mean anything at all. I spent many years earning the right to call myself an Admiral. And the same is true of every member of our crew. So what is it that we do? Um, all right, well, let me, let me get into that. But let's start with asking the question, what is, why Star Trek? Um, what, what makes Star Trek so special? Um, is it a fun TV show? Yes, sure. But why, why all of this? Why dedicate all of our, our time and efforts? Why do we dress up in these, in these uniforms? Why do we carry ranks and titles as inspired by Star Trek? What makes Star Trek so special that sets it apart from other entertainment franchises like Star Wars or Doctor Who? Um, I would say that the difference is that Star Trek is the depiction of Gene's dream. Um, Gene Roddenberry, the, the initial creator of Star Trek, obviously he wasn't the only person who ever worked on Star Trek, but his voice in the creation of Star Trek was the loudest in the chorus, at least at the beginning. And it's his vision that has brought about all of this. And what was that vision? His vision was of a futuristic world in which the problems that he knew in the world that he recognized were largely gone. So poverty, crime, racism, war, all of those things were gone, at least on Earth, if not in the rest of the galaxy as well. We as Star Trek fans recognize the beauty and the elegance of that world that he envisions. And we want to try and make it come about. And that is our standing order number two here on the Dauntless. Encourage initiatives to help bring about the future envisioned in Star Trek. Um, those of you who've paid attention to some of the, the lectures that I've put out online about Star Trek economics will know that I feel that a significant factor in developing that optimistic future will be um, technology. Um, once we arrive at a, a state of post-automation and post-scarcity economics and, and technology, the, the rest of the, the, the bricks will probably fall into place. Um, I think that's largely true. Um, but there is a cultural element, a philosophical element, that is omitted when discussing the economic and technological side of this development towards this optimistic Star Trek future. And that is the philosophy of, let me help. This is a philosophy that was first enumerated in an original series episode called City on the Edge of Forever, in which Kirk, Spock and McCoy travel back in time to the, uh, the early 20th century, and they meet uh, a local from that time period, Edith Keeler, and Kirk explains to her that culture has evolved from the one that she recognized in the 20th century to the one that he came from in the 23rd. And one of the key factors in that evolution has been this switch from where we were, or arguably still are here in the 21st century, which is a state of whenever we are posed with a situation, the, the question that comes to mind is, What's in it for me? What can I do to turn the situation to my benefit? Not everybody's like that, but I think we all are, at least to some extent. 
and I would go so far as to say that it is a, a defining characteristic of our culture here in the, in the late 20th, early 21st century. Um, but in the future that Kirk was explaining, uh, which again is the Star Trek future, there's been a cultural shift from that, what's in it for me, over to let me help. When presented with somebody in need, somebody who requires assistance, the question is, please let me help you. What can I do to help you? What can I do to make your life better? If we all, or at least enough of us, think that way, uh, in a way that allows us to do what we can to help other people, can you imagine how, in any way in which the world could not develop towards the idyllic Star Trek future? If we're all asking that question of each other at all times, what can I do to help you? How can we not eliminate things like crime and poverty and war, at least to a significant extent? Um, and that is that is our fundamental mission here in the Dauntless, is to, to bring about that world through asking that question, let me help. So being the sort of person that I am, I've done some research. Um, to try and figure out what the most efficient thing that we can do as individual members and as a chapter in order to make a real difference in the lives of other people. Um, aside from becoming a, a medical professional, which is beyond the reach for many of us, most of us probably, beyond making large cash donations, which again is beyond the reach for most of us, the one thing that any individual person or group of people can do in order to make the biggest impact on the lives of other people is to give blood. Giving blood is extremely efficient. It takes you about 20 minutes to do. You can only do it once every couple of months. So 20 minutes, once every two months or so. Uh, you get a little needle prick in your arm. It's a, a moment of, of uh, inconvenience and discomfort. Um, lasts a few minutes and then they unplug you and it's all done. They'll give you a cookie and a juice and, and thank you for your your, uh, your your assistance and they'll send you on your way. That moment, producing one unit of blood, can then be split into three different blood products, each one of which has the potential to save a person's life. So 20 minutes, once every two months, you're saving up to three people's lives. There are members of this crew, members of my family, who have been saved, whose lives have been saved by the timeliest receipt of a unit of blood. I also have people in my family who did not survive because they didn't receive the unit of blood that they needed when they needed it. That unit of blood is so pivotal to the survival of a person who's in that situation, in that dire straits, there's no thing that anybody can do that it has more of an impact on that person's life than making sure that that unit of blood is available. And this is why, for my tenure as commanding officer in the, of the Dauntless, and my previous command as well, I have made a point of ensuring that once every couple of months, we as a crew all go together in our various away teams and then donate blood together. Because that is an extremely efficient way of making a difference in people's lives and bringing about that optimistic future as envisioned in Star Trek. Now, not everybody is physically capable of giving blood. I understand that. Um, perhaps you have some kind of a medical condition or something that, pre that prevents you from, from donating blood regularly. Or maybe you're just not comfortable giving blood or something like that. If, if you fall into that category of people who, are, who feel unable or unwilling to give blood, I would put to you that the responsibility of, refi of finding an alternative way rests with you. Um, it's up to you to answer the question of what you can do instead of giving blood that is anywhere near as efficient at making a difference in people's lives. If you have a medical condition, I would suggest that maybe you have a conversation with your medical practitioner, with your doctor, with your specialist, to find out what steps, if any, you can take to get yourself into a physical condition in which you will be able to donate blood safely. Um, and then undertake those steps. Um, that is something that you can do within yourself, within your own body, in order to advance our mission. 
in order to save as many lives as possible. If there are no steps that you can take, if there's nothing you can do to get yourself into a condition where you are able to safely give blood, then, then there's more questions you need to ask about yourself. Is, is what can you do instead? Well, I can, I can suggest an alternative. Find someone, either another member of the crew, or a member of your family, or a friend, a colleague, somebody else that you know, who is or would be interested in becoming a regular blood donor, and then support that person. Giving blood is, although it's a relatively minor inconvenience, it's never nice to do it alone. If you can do it with a friend, it's that much easier. So if that person can have a friend who can support them and encourage them while they're giving blood, I guarantee you they will be grateful for it. So get in touch with that friend or family member or ideally crew member and ask how you can support them in their blood donation. Perhaps you can buy them breakfast beforehand. Uh, perhaps you can walk with them to the blood facility. Keep them company, hold their hand, tell them a joke, take photographs, bring them their juice and cookie, um, give them a ride. There are lots of ways that you can provide support to somebody who is giving blood. So although you're not the one who's giving the actual physical unit, you are integral to that process of saving those three lives. If there's still no way, if by some miracle you don't know anybody who falls into that category of somebody who is a, a regular or potential blood donor, then the responsibility again falls to you to figure out what you can do in order to make such an impact on people's lives. Now, although blood donation is our preferred mission on the Dauntless, because again, it is the most efficient thing that we can do, there are other initiatives that we offer and um, that can provide recognition to you as a member of the crew to make an, an effort to change people's lives, uh, specifically through our public service initiative. If you are able to find uh, an organization in your area to which you can contribute your time and effort um, through their volunteer program, then you can rack up public service hours, which will count towards you receiving the, uh, the public service award, which we grant out every year. It will also count towards your rank promotions. It will also potentially even count towards awards that can be granted at the regional and the fleet level. So your volunteer time is not to be discarded. It is valuable. Um, I myself put in a number of hours volunteering over and above my regular blood donation. Um, these things are all important and they all count towards that mission of trying to work to bring about that optimistic Star Trek future. First priority, blood donation. We will be having another blood donation mission in a couple of months time. We had our last one weekend before last, which means we have to allow two months or so for that uh, for all of us to, to regain our necessary vital fluids. Once we've done so, we will be scheduling another mission. Please watch out for uh, announcements relating to that. Um, in the meantime, please give some serious, serious thought to what you can do over and above donating blood. Or if you are somebody who is unable to donate blood for whatever reason, please think carefully about what you can do in order to make a difference yourself. It's not a question you need to answer to me. Uh, it's a question you'll need to answer within the confines of your own mind, but you are welcome to come and discuss it with me. My ready room door is always open. Uh, send me a message anytime on Discord and I'll get back to you whenever I can. Thank you for your attention today. Swat out.